talking some more about proofs. We're going to do some more geometrical proofs today. Uh, we're going to do uh, proving uh, statement relationships. And our first postulate is called the pillar postulate. It's not one that we use a lot, um, but I'm just going to explain it to you. Um, and basically it says that the points on any line or line segment can be put into a one-to-one -one correspondence um, on a ruler. So that one endpoint is at zero and the, uh, the other endpoint is, has a unique length. Okay? So like AB has one length. Then that's, you know, very length. It's got one length. Okay? So A corresponds with zero and B, B corresponds with what it, um, its length is. The segment addition postulate we do use a lot. And basically if A, B, and C are collinear and B is between A and C, then A, B plus B, C equals A, C. You can write that going the other direction. A, C equals A, B plus B, C. You can write that going um, either direction. And which way do you write it? It just kind of depends on what you're trying to accomplish. And you'll kind of see that as we go through. All right, so our first problem states that um, PR is congruent to QS. So this segment right here is congruent to this segment right there. It wants us to prove that PQ is equal to RS. Now, if you think about it, it makes sense. Because if this big blue segment is equal to the other big blue segment, okay, and they share this QR, if I take that QR away, wouldn't it make sense if it's what left on the other side to make each other? Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So I have PR equals QS. That's given to me. Now, because PR is equal to QS, I want to establish what makes up PR and what makes up QS. So PR is made up of PQ plus QR. And QS is made up of QR plus RS. What's that called? Segment addition postulate. Now, if we go back up here and look at this equation, we can see that PR and QS are equal to each other, yes? So could we take and replace PR with what it's equal to, and QS with what it's equal to. So I'm going to take this PR and I'm going to replace it with PQ plus QR. And I'm going to retake QS and I'm going to replace it with QR plus R. What's it called when you replace something with what it's equal to? Substitution. Now, remember, we are trying to get PQ and RS to be equal to each other. So looking at this equation, what could we do to make that happen? Subtract QR from both sides. So we end up with PQ equals RS by subtraction. And we're done. If that's what we're trying to prove. So we started out with the big segments equal to each other. And so then we establish what makes those big segments up. And then that allows us to replace the big part with the sum of the little parts. Okay? And then we can subtract what they have in common. All right. Here's another one. This one is kind of the reverse of that one, the opposite. In this problem, we're told that PQ and SQ are congruent and that QR and QT are congruent. And um, I want to prove that PR and ST are congruent. So this time, I know that the little pieces are congruent. So if I took and added the 1 dash and the 2 dash together, and I took the other 1 dash and the 2 dash together, if I added those, shouldn't they be equal to each other? Yes. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So I start out with PQ is congruent to SQ, and QR is congruent to QT, and that's given to you. Now, because we talked about having to add the segments together, we can't be in the congruence mode. We have to be in the equality mode, okay? So what allows us to go from congruence to equality? 
Okay, definition of congruent state. So PQ equals SQ, and QR equals QT, and that is definition of congruent state. Okay, so now, like I said, this one's a little bit different. Because the little pieces are equal to each other, I'm going to take the single dash point. I'm going to take the fact that PQ and SQ are equal to each other, okay? And then I know that QR and QT are equal to each other. So could I take QR and add it to one side and QT and add it to the other? Because they're the same thing, right? Because they're equal. So I'm going to add a QR to the left side, and I'm going to add QT to the right side. What's it called when you add the same thing to both sides? Addition. Now, remember, I'm trying to get PR and ST to be equal to each other. That's the big part. So I need to, again, establish what makes up PR and what makes up ST. So PR is made up of PQ plus QR, and ST is made up of SQ plus QT. And what's that called? Segment addition postulate. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the fact that PQ plus QR, see how I've got it here? PQ plus QR is equal to PR, isn't it? So could I replace this PQ plus QR with PR? Replace this part of the equation with what it's equal to, which is PR. Okay, so I'm going to replace it with PR, and then I'm going to replace this part of the equation, SQ plus QT, I'm going to replace it with what it's equal to. And what's it equal to? ST. Okay. So I took this equation right here, and I replaced the PQ plus QR with its whole segment, and I replaced the SQ plus QT with its whole segment, and I established that right here. All right, and what's that called? Substitution. All right, well, we're almost there, right? Isn't that what we're trying to prove? With what exception? What do I need to, need to do next? Take it to a congruent state. So, PR is congruent to ST by definition of congruent state. And so I know you guys are like, wow. But let me tell you, looking and understanding proofs that are done correctly is really going to help you because you will probably see another couple that are just like this and the picture's just a little different but the concept is just the same. So even if you didn't totally understand what I did as I went through this, you really need to read back through it and try to follow the steps. And if you can get to where you can try to figure out why did you do this, you know, why did you do that, why did you do this, if you can get that, then it's like a pattern and you're going to be able to do some of the other ones. Okay? Again, we started out with the little pieces. We can grow it to each other. We changed it to pieces, right? Then we took the single arcs, okay, the PQ and the SQ, and we added the double arcs to both sides. Okay, we added QR to one side and QT to the other. And with that in mind, we want to replace those sums with the whole. So I established what makes up the whole with the segment addition postulate, and then I was able to substitute, okay, and then change it back to a all right, let's talk about a couple of properties. These properties we talked about last week when we took those algebraic proofs. Um, some of these apply to congruence as well as equality. Um, you have the reflexive property of congruence. Remember, reflexive was like A plus A. So AB is congruent to AB. That's still reflexive. I mean, you can just put reflexive. That's fine with me. Uh, symmetric property, that's the one that flip-flops. AB is congruent to CD. Uh, then you flip it, CD is congruent to AB. That's the symmetric property. And then the transitive, if AB is congruent to CD, repeat, CD is congruent to EF, and AB is congruent to EF. That's transitive. Okay, so it works with equality. It also works with congruence. All right, 
So this next problem is a little different than what's on your page. So if you will scribble out that little paragraph and then change those first two lines that talk about midpoint and repeat that with, uh, uh, fix that with SY is congruent to FY and then change that next to it. So you can fix it on your notes before we get started. You have a long paragraph, scribble that out, and then look at your given. Your given is different than my given. I want you're given to be like my given. I changed it to make it a little bit easier. So SY is congruent to FY. XY is congruent to CY. And then your proof stays the same. It didn't change. SC is congruent to SX. Oh, the letters are switched. Okay, yeah, same thing, ZF and FD. But you want to switch it to make it easier, that's good. Okay, so in this problem, we are told that SY is congruent to FY. So SY is congruent to FY. We're also told that XY is congruent to CY. We want to prove that SZ is congruent to FF. So let's think about it. These big pieces are congruent. These little parts are congruent. And I want to prove that the other parts are. So if, if I took away these two little congruent parts, would it make sense that what's left is going to be congruent? Yes. So this looks like that first one here. Okay? It's similar to that one. All right. So we're going to start out with SY is congruent to FY, and XY is congruent to ZY. And since we talked about taking away something that they shared, what do you think we, we need to do next? Can you take away incongruence? No, it has to be a math, it has to be a math problem. So if it's incongruence and you're going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, you need to change it to equality, okay? So I want to change both of these statements to equality statements. And how do you do that? Definition of congruent uh, segments, right? And what's that called? Definition of congruent segments. So now, this right here, that is the big segments, right? And we know that those big segments are equal to each other. So when you know those big segments are equal to each other, you want to start out by establishing what makes them up. Okay, what makes up SY and what makes up FY? Okay, SY is made up of FX plus XY, and FY is made up of FZ plus and what's that called? Segment addition postulate. All right. Now, back to this, um, back to this little statement right here. SY equals FY, all right? Could I go and replace SY with what it's equal to? which is this, and replace FY with what it's equal to. Could I do that? Okay, so that's what I want to do. What's that called? Substitution. So I'm replacing SY with SX plus XY, and I'm replacing FY with FZ plus ZY. And that is substitution. Now, this next step is optional. But sometimes it's helpful for people to see this. In this problem right here, um, if I go back and look where this arrow is, see how x, y, and z, y are equal? That'll let, I can go in, into this equation. I can replace one with the other, yes? If two things are equal, I can replace one with another. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this z, y with x, y because they're equal to each other. So that gives me f, x plus x, y equals f, z plus x, y. What would that be called? It's called substitution again. 
Now, the reason I did that is because up here, I'm trying to get these two equal to each other. I'm still trying to get those two equal to each other. So what do you think I can do to accomplish that? Subtract xy. And so that gives me sx equals sz by subtraction. Okay. Now, technically, I could have skipped that middle step and gone straight to there by subtraction because these two are equal to each other. Okay, so I could just subtract them the way they are, but sometimes people find it helpful for me to replace so they can see that they're actually subtracting something that's the same. Okay, all right. So now I'm here at Fx equals Fz. That's almost where we need to be. We need to change two things now. The order. So what allows us to change the order? That's symmetric. So we're going to reverse it. Fz equals Fx, and that's symmetric. And then what's the other thing that needs to happen? change it to be congruent, right? So, Fz is congruent to Fx. And that's the definition of congruent statements. So we started out changing our congruent statements to equality statements. We took the whole segments, the big ones, Sy and Fy, and we established what made those up by the segment addition postulate. Then we were able to go back into those big segments and replace each one of them with what they were equal to. That's what we did here. Okay? Then we replaced again, we, we replaced CY with XY because they're equal. That allowed me to subtract. And then basically you're done at that point. You just got to get them in the right order with the right symbols. Okay? All right. Last couple of problems. Identify the property. If AB is congruent to BC, then BC is congruent to AB. What is that? Not transitive. Symmetric. Yeah. Symmetric. Okay. If PQ is congruent to RS and RS is congruent to XY, then PQ is congruent to XY. So that's transitive. Okay. If N is between P and Q, then PQ equals PM plus MQ. That's the same addition. If you don't recognize that, draw a picture. I think it might help. If AB equals PQ and BC equals QR, then AB plus BC equals QR, PQ plus QR. This one's a little tricky. Notice I've got this equation right there, right? AB is equal to PQ. And if I come over here, AB is on one side, PQ is on the other. Here, I've got BC and QR that are equal to each other. And notice, I added BC to AB and I added QR to PQ. So what they do? It's addition. Well, they, well, to go back, you subtract, but to go from to your if to your this, you would add, right? They took this equation, and they added BC to one side and QR to the other, okay? So that is addition. And then the last one, if EF equals 9 and MN equals 9, then EF equals MN. Substitution.